what happens when you have a positive and a negative charge right we have two unlike charges they're definitely going to attract right so the answer to 7.2 will be something like the following we suppose to draw the net electric field pattern due to the two point charges and now uh, 7.3 we need to calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force that y exists on x right so we have y and x right there uh, so f is equals to k q1 q2 divided by r squared so what is the value of k k is a constant right so we have 9 times 10 to the power of 9 and then q1 we can take x as q1 but when you substitute you don't put the negative sign you just put uh, the magnitude which is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 multiply by q2 which is also 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 so we can just say 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 uh, squared right and then divided by the distance between the two charges so we have 0 0.03 and then we can square that 5.18 times 10 to the power minus 4 neutrons right so yeah there we go uh, let's move to the next question and see what we can do so 7.7.4 Let's do a labeled vector diagram to show the directions of the electric fields at the point where X is positioned. Right. So in our question statement, we are told that a third point charge Z of unknown positive charge. So we have a positive right here. And then it is placed uh, 0 0.01 meters to the left of point charge X on the line joining point charges x and y uh, as we can clearly see right so we need to draw a labeled vector diagram to show the directions of the electric field uh, at the point where x is positioned right so let's say x is positioned somewhere here we're gonna have an electric field as a consequence of our charge z right so let's call it e1 pointing to the right and then the electric field due to y is gonna be to the left right so we have uh, something like that for 7.4 7.5 it says that the magnitude of the resultant electric field at the point where x is positioned is 4.91 times 10 to the 5 newtons per column let's calculate the magnitude of charge z so the resultant electric field will be equals to e1 minus e2 right as we can see that uh, they are pointing in opposite directions so e net is 4.91 times 10 to the power 5 and then e1 we don't have e1 right uh, that is what we're going to use to find uh, the charge of z so we have e1 minus e2 so we're going to have k let's not forget that e is equal to k q divided by r squared right so we're going to have 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by the distance right from here to here is 0 0.03 squared so we have is 0 0.03 right so we're gonna have 0 0.03 squared right so we're gonna have 4.91 times 10 to the power 5 plus 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiply by 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 everything divided by 0 0.03 squared and this will be equals to 
e1. Right, so instead of writing e1, let's go ahead and substitute, right? So we're gonna have 4.91 times 10 to the power 5 plus 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9. Uh, everything divided by 0 0.03 squared. And then this will be equals to 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the charge of z divided by the distance. So the distance from z to x uh, is 0 0.01 meters, right? So we're going to have 0 0.01 meters. And we can square that. On the left hand side, I have um, 5.63 times 10 to the power 5. Uh, this is equals to 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the charge of z divided by 0 0.01 squared. Right. So the charge on z will be equals to 5.63 times 10 to the power 5. Everything divided by 9 times 10 to the power 9 divided by 0 0.01 uh, squared right and then ultimately uh, we're going to get 6.26 times 10 to the